The next thing that we are taking up is cancer. Now what exactly is cancer? In very simple language we say it is uncontrolled division of cells. When the cells divide in an uncontrolled manner. Our cells, they divide only up to fixed number. And we have some kind of mechanisms by which their division gets stopped. One such mechanism is known as contact inhibition. So when the cells start to divide and the cells they come in contact with each other, they will stop dividing. So when they come in contact, the division stops. That is contact inhibition. The cells which divide in an uncontrolled manner, they have lost this contact inhibition control. Now what exactly happens? We all have in every cell a gene which is known as proto-oncogene. It is called the proto-oncogene. Oncogene. And that is why the doctors who treat or deal with the cancer patients, they are called oncologists. So we all have this proto-oncogene. This gene is inactive. Anything which triggers this gene and converts it into oncogene, then the cell is going to divide and a tumor is formed. So this is a tumor. The tumors are of two types, benign and malignant. In these benign tumors and malignant tumors, the cells are undifferentiated. Undifferentiated means they are not going to become any specialized cell. They just divide and divide and divide. Nothing specialized. You know, you can uh, relate it with meristematic cells. What happens in plants when the meristem divides? It just divides and divides and divides. Doesn't get specialized. Here also there is no specialized tissue that which is formed, no specialized cell, only basic. So we call these cells or these tumors as having undifferentiated and capsulated What is meant by capsulated? It is a mass of cells which is surrounded by a thick fibrous sheath. You can also call it encapsulated, not unencapsulated. Encapsulated. That means enclosed in a capsule. And here it is undifferentiated and uncapsulated. That means here there is a mass of cells and there is no cover, no capsule, no sheet. This is the basic difference between the two types of tumors. Now let us first talk about the characteristic features of the cancerous cells and then we will see how these two tumors can be differentiated in one more way. Characteristics of cancerous cells. Number one, they have lost contact inhibition. Lost contact inhibition control. They continuously divide. Because they are continuously divide, they would need more and more oxygen, they would need more and more uh, nutrients. So, they release angiogenic substance. Angiogenic substances promote blood vessel formation. Increases blood vessel formation in that area. 
That means if there is a tumor, it will release the, some substances. So if there is one blood vessel which is going like this with the capillaries and everything, there will be one more branch coming here, there will be one more blood vessel coming here, so that they keep getting more and more and more nutrients. That is because of this release of angiogenic factor. They have high invasive power and low adhesive power. That means they can invade, penetrate into something. Adhesive power, they, that means they will not remain stuck with each other. So now let us come to these tumors. Benign tumor, suppose here is a blood vessel, maybe the number of blood vessels has gone up, but the cell cannot come into the blood vessel because of the capsule. But in this case, the cells have high invasive power, they will invade into this blood vessel, and if they come into the blood vessel, they will be carried to every part of the body along with blood. That means these cells are going to spread from the point place where the first tumor was formed to other places. This is known as metastasis. So where is the risk of metastasis more? Obviously when there is no capsule. And that is why if surgically benign tumor is removed, you can be assured that you know you've removed all the cancerous cells from that area. But if there is a malignant tumor, and even if you remove it surgically, there are 100% chances that the cancerous cells have moved to different parts of the body. And wherever they reach, they will again start to divide. And the substances which bring about this change, they are known as carcinogens. Carcinogens are nothing but mutagens. Cancer causing substances, carcino carcinogens can be chemicals, carcinogens can be physical irritants. There are chemicals like benzpyrene can cause cancer. Any hard object like people who chew tobacco or betel nut, that physical irritant can cause cancer. Nicotine can cause cancer. Radiations can cause cancer. Viruses can cause, cause cancer, like human papilloma virus, it causes cancer of cervix. So these carcinogens, they can be of different categories. They can be physical, they can be chemical, they can be in the form of radiations, and they can be biological. Physical irritants, any, any physical irritant, even beetle that can result into this. Chemical, you can have benzpyrene. Nicotine. Radiations, alpha, beta, gamma, UV rays, X-rays, all can cause cancer. And here in, in biological, we take human papilloma virus which causes cancer of cervix. So carcinogen can be of any category and what will it do? It will just convert this proto-oncogen into oncogen. When will it happen? Nobody knows. A person may get cancer after smoking few cigarettes or a person may never get cancer even after smoking uh, cigarettes. A person who never smokes can also get cancer. So there is no fixed thing, but yes, those who smoke, they are at a higher risk. Those who chew tobacco, they are at a higher risk as compared to the person who is not using them. So these are the carcinogens. And we can classify these cancers on the basis of the tissue which they affect. Say for example, it can be carcinoma, sarcoma carcinoma 
is the cancer of epithelial tissue. Carcinoma is cancer of epithelial tissue that is skin or even mucous membrane. Then sarcoma is the cancer of mesodermal tissues. All the tissues which originate from mesoderm, they are kept under one category. And leukemia, this is blood cancer. Though blood is mesodermal, it is a connective tissue, but it is kept separately because this is the only cancer where there is no tumor formation. No tumor formation, only the number of cells, number of WPCs, they increase. So these are the broad categories. Now how do we detect this cancer? The tumor can be detected by imaging techniques like CT scans, X-rays, MRIs. By this, we can find out that there is some kind of a lump, some kind of a mass. And if some mass is detected, how do we be sure that it is carcinogenic? It is malignant. It is cancerous. So that is known as biopsy. Biopsy is actually histopathological study. Histopathological study. Here they have given all those uh, techniques. Increased cell count in leukemia. In biopsy, a piece of the suspected tissue is cut, a thin section is stained and examined under microscope. It is known as histopathological study. Techniques like x-ray, com uh, computer tomography, that is CT scan, MRI, these are very useful to detect whether there is any kind of tumor or lung because in all of the cancers there is going to be tumor except for this. This can be detected by counting the cells because here the cell count goes in high. WBC count increases. So these are uh, the causes detection. Now how do we treat it? The treatments are chemicals which is known as chemotherapy. So one is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy includes very strong chemicals. It is very effective treatment, but these chemicals are so strong that they affect the cells surrounding the tumor or other normal cells. And that is why in chemotherapy, there are side effects also. Side effects are like weight loss, loss of hair, these are the most common side effects. But everything gets to normal after the treatment is over. After this doses of chemotherapy are done, after the cancer is cured, after that the hair regrow, the body weight is again gained, again coming back to the normal. So everything can come back to normal. But these chemicals are very, very powerful. Then there is radiation therapy. In radiation therapy, radiations are given. Now we just now said that there are some radiations which are carcinogenic and here they are using radiation as a therapy. The reason is these radiations harm the cells which are fast dividing because these radiations they damage DNA. So if a tumor is there, tumor is a fast dividing cells. So if they are exposed to radiation, these radiation will damage the DNA when it is multiplied. When DNA replicates, that is the time the radiation is damaged. And imagine if the cancerous cells are undergoing mutation, they may become non-cancerous or they may die. 
So we are using radiations to treat cancer. Then there is something called immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is when we are giving interferons or antibodies to fight against those chemicals. This is a pretty recent uh, technique. There is one more which is called hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy is given only in selected types of cancers. Like, if a female has breast cancer, then the treatment is testosterone. If a male has prostate gland cancer, then the treatment is estrogen. It is the opposite sex hormone which is used for the treatment. So in females, estrogen level is more. So if a female has breast cancer, the hormone which can be used to treat is testosterone, male sex hormone. If males have this cancer, prostate cancer, then the female sex hormone will be used. That means hormone therapy can be used only if there is a cancer of the reproductive system or structures associated with reproductive system. Interferons can also be given because there are some cancers caused by the virus also. So in that case, interferons are also given. So there can be multiple uh, therapies. If cancer is detected at very early stage, it is 100% curable. But if it is like, you know, very, very late, when the cancer cells have spread out in every part of the body, then it becomes very difficult. But all types of cancers have been treated. If condition is only one, that if they are detected at very early stage. And that is why we need to be aware of the symptoms. We need to be aware of what is happening in our body. The symptoms are very simple, weight loss. You're eating normal and you're losing weight. Loss of appetite. Disturbed digestive system. Sometimes it is constipation, sometimes it is loose motions. Some, you see a small lump under your skin or somewhere. You press it and it doesn't hurt. And you see that it is growing in size. Then these are all simple indications which we can, you know, catch easily. 